Welcome back to this week's big content Q&A. If you want to ask some questions for next week, go join the Discord. Free to join. Drop your question in the Q&A channel. We're going to get right into this bench. This is a long question. I'll read it out for anyone on YouTube or the podcast. You could probably skip ahead like 30 seconds or so. Uxistan writes in, he said, I uh, stumbled upon these videos a couple weeks ago, and I really appreciate what you do. Since your content seems to be focused mostly, if not all, on video, I don't know if you have any opinion, but I figured what the hell I'll ask anyway. I recently started a sports blog. It's something I've had the desire to do ever since writing articles in high school, but I've always created excuses and reasons to justify why I shouldn't. Those reasons changed recently as I've been stagnant at my job, recently had my first child, and my wife's salary plus a little consulting work on my end gives us enough money to pay the bills and still add to our savings. Basically, the excuses and fear have run dry and it's time to do this now or I realize it is never going to happen. My question is, do you have any thoughts on this space and or the best way to try to utilize the social platforms to drive traffic? Writing is my forte, and I certainly could get on camera, but it's something I am dreading, but I'll do whatever I need to do to attempt to make this dream a reality. Thanks again, Nick. So to summarize, this guy is really passionate about writing, and he just started a sports blog, and he's basically asking, because we do so much video content, do you have any advice on what I could do to help grow my blog or what I should do writing-wise, or do I just need to jump on camera? The first thing I want to say, based on how you asked the question, it makes me a little nervous that you're going to expect quick results. Force yourself down this lane where you're like, all right, I'm finally going to do it. And when you wait that long to do something, you kind of feel like that was part of the process. You waited five years to start the sports blog. Something should happen now. Guess what? You waited five years to start the sports blog. From this moment on, it's going to take three years to see results on it. So if you don't have the patience for that, it's going to be problematic for you. We got that out of the way. If you're good to roll, here's the advice I will try to give to you. The first thing you want to do as a content creator is to understand how you want to communicate what you're trying to communicate, right? And there's three ways to do it right now, depending on, I don't know what the social world, the virtual world is going to look like in a couple of years. But right now you could do it via video, which is my preferred preference. You could do it via audio or you could do it via writing and sounds like, oh, you want to write. But what I would say to you, and this has been a constant theme in these Q and A's, it feels like is reverse engineer what you're actually trying to do or what drives you or what it is that you love about what you're doing, what it is you love about the sports blog. It seems like you are just passionate about writing about sports. So my first piece of advice would be not to get romanticized about where you are doing that. The North Star should always be, I love writing about sports. So you could write about sports. It does not have to be at a blog. When you're new to content, you typically tend to look at what has been successful over the past five to 10 years, right? Because those are the people that inspired you. Those are the people that you looked up to. Those are the people that gave you the reason to start content. And you say, hey, I want to do what they're doing. The problem with that is what happens from this point over the next 10 years will be a completely different way. You could be the generation. You could be the person in the generation that inspires the per the you in 10 years from now. But it won't be the same way that those people inspired you. So my question is, like, you want to write about sports online. Why does it have to be a blog? You're emotionally attached or romanticized to a blog for probably no reason other than you probably been inspired by people who have blogs in the sports media world in my opinion there are obviously people who could do it writing a pure blog is the worst way to grow because seo has been around forever you're never going to rank on google doing it people are never going to find you organically unless you are growing through other platforms first that does not mean you got to get on tiktok that does not mean you got to get on youtube that does not mean you have to get on video what you need to do is look at the social platforms and figure out where there's a leverage point for writing. And to me, there's a very clear one right now on Twitter. I'll give you a few examples within the fantasy space. You look at Alex Caruso, you look at Sal Vetri, you look at Joe Holka. These are the dudes within the fantasy space that write threads on Twitter, and I'm probably leaving a few people out, but they've grown tremendously over the last year, two years, over six figures, some of them just by writing on Twitter. And I'm seeing this within like every industry because I put out content about making content. If I go to my For You page on Twitter, my For You timeline on Twitter, I'm starting to see a lot of tweets about content in general and content creation. And the people within that industry or niche are making Twitter threads and they're getting popular from making Twitter threads. And I'd go as far as saying that like Twitter threads are 
almost, in essence, the new age version of blogs. You might look at Twitter and think about Twitter and say, oh, oh, just a tweet, you put in less effort. Not the case. These Twitter threads that they're putting out are basically full-length blog posts just spread out throughout Twitter. And there are a lot of people in the industry that are annoyed by it, that mute them, that follow, that unfollow them, that yell at them, that talk shit about them. That's fine. If you don't like that shit, unfollow them. That's a you problem. And the only reason you hear noise about why people don't like it is because it works. You don't hear people talking shit about things that don't work. If those threads got like two likes per post, no one would say a fucking thing about them. All the losers that make fun of those things are literally just jealous that those people found a leverage point somewhere. It's the same dudes that were probably making fun of people making YouTube videos eight years ago and now make fun of people making fantasy videos on TikTok, aka the people that are rapidly becoming irrelevant. Anyways, the point is figure out exactly how it is you want to communicate for you it's writing, but you have to become a marketer. You have to understand the social platforms because that is the only way to distribute in today's world. So you got to figure out how you want to communicate communicate and what are the best platforms to do so. I feel really comfortable on video. I just happen to be lucky enough that the video platforms are like the most pl popular platforms, right? TikTok and YouTube. Those platforms also have innate writing ability in them. These Twitter threads are really popular, but again, you're going to write a bunch of threads and they're going to get zero fucking love because content doesn't come easy. Growing through content does not come easy. It all goes back to patience. TikTok has put more of an emphasis in their SEO. People searching for things on TikTok. They allow you to write 2,000 characters in the captions of their videos. There are plenty of fantasy TikTok accounts, sports TikTok accounts that put up pictures with slides and then write a very long post or caption or whatever that's 2,000 characters. Instagram was the same way like seven years ago when they allowed long captions. A lot of people grew from, I, I think like the fitness and the health space immediately where people were writing like full workout plans or full nutrition plans or whatever. You, you take what you want to do and you're romanticized to blogging, do blogging where you're actually able to grow and it's not through blogging. Newsletters are really cool too. I'd kind of argue that they're like the new age blog, except like you can't build a newsletter organically. That, that That's like a sale. People need to know you before they sign up for the newsletter. Whereas on Twitter, on any of these social platforms, you could actually just grow organically. One thing I would try out too, and I actually got on a call with someone yesterday and suggested this. I don't know if this is efficient or not. I don't know if this works or not, but I would fuck around with some AI tools. Like you can get on ChatGBT, see if you could post your blog into chat GBT and tell them to write a Twitter thread for you. Be like, write a Twitter thread that composes of 10 tweets or something like that, 10 threads or something like that, and see how it comes out. And then you could tweak it from there. So it saves you a little bit of time and still could be a good product. I don't know. I haven't really messed around that much with, with log stuff because I don't write personally. But at the end of the day, the point I'm trying to get across is you are anyone who's on the internet is a media slash marketer person first, meaning understand where attention and distribution is, and then you are whatever your passion is secondly. And if you think with that mindset, you will go so much fucking further. Sure, you could make it as a writer, but do you have to do it as a blogger? Do you need a website? Do you need a blog? Make your own fucking personal website. Who cares? I think what you need to do is figure out why you think you need a blog. And I think if you're really attached to the idea, just you can make a blog. Sure. But I'm telling you, you're not really going to grow. So I hope I hope that was helpful a little bit to you. Question number two comes in from The Real Jim Shady. This is probably dumb because when you just have your own opinion, but how can you go from consuming content, rankings, trade grades, et cetera, to creating content when so much bias may have infiltrated your thought process based on your consumption patterns? I love that Dr. Morse ranked Swift as his RB1 last year. It was so off the norm. Is there a balance that needs to be struck or just put out what you feel? That probably wasn't a big issue when you started. So the question is basically, how do you put out your own content? How do you make content that is not just what you hear about the echo chamber every day inside Twitter and on YouTube, et cetera? My best answer would be the fact that you're even asking this question means that you have a pull to create content and you got to search within that pull. There's something pulling you to be like, you're filling this. We need you to fill this gap. Most people create content because there's like a gap to fill, not from even like a business sense, but like internally, maybe subconsciously, I don't fucking know, but you're feeling a pull being like, oh, no one is talking about this. How come no one's doing this like this? And I guarantee you there's something inside of you that is pulling you to do that. You may come across a ranking sheet within fantasy uh, and you're like, this is terrible. This is what it should be. And that right there is what you need to capture. And that's the content you make. Whatever is pulling you in the direction of being like, ah, I need to make content because there's not this 
gap being filled is what you make the content about. On the more specific example you gave, you said, I love that Dr. Morris ranked Swift as his RB1 last year. It was so off the norm. Like, did you like what he was saying or did you like it just because he was being different? Because obviously in retrospect, it was not a good take, but the analysis might've been good, which I'm fine with. And that's just part of putting out content in the fantasy space. You're going to be wrong about a lot of shit. But again, I, I think anyone that I've come across that is like a, an actual creator has always had a pull to make content that they feel like improves upon the space that they're making content in, or they feel like there's a gap in the space. So I would try to like internalize that and ask yourself what it is, and then just make content about that. And then you could pull these examples when you're like, there's so much noise in this echo chamber in your content. If it's different than that, you could say this person is doing this, or this company is doing this and reference that as to why your content is good because it's different than this. And the reasoning behind why you're doing it different, don't just different shit to do different shit. It still needs to be well researched. It still needs to be thorough. It still needs to come with the big fucking facts, but I would use it to a strength. Turn, turn that weakness into a strength. You think there's all this inherent bias, but take that and be like, this is why you guys should not buy into the bias. And if you can leave people with a counterpoint, then that's great content. I tweeted this out last week. The best pieces of content leave people feeling differently than when they came in on something they felt strongly about. If you feel strongly about a subject, you come into a piece of content and it has changed your mind a little bit about that, great piece of content. If you come into a piece of content indifferent about a subject matter, and by the end of it, you now have a strongly forced opinion, good piece of content. Think about it that way. Third and probably final question from Kelsey. Nick, you make content and run a business. Either could be done separately. Do you think doing them together has helped to put you on a path for success? And could you ever have one without the other? For me, they just overlapped and it happened naturally. I don't think I ever started off when I did thinking... I'm going to build a business. I genuinely just wanted to help people, which is so cute and raw. And, you know, like I look back on my younger self and I'm like, what a good person you are. What the fuck happened? You could absolutely do one without the other. Uh, you can make content as a way to express yourself or to help people. And you could plan to never monetize. But the better you are at what I just said, the more opportunities to monetize are going to come your way in a good way. And you could also obviously start a business without making content. Think of pretty much any mom and pop store. And, and the problem with, I can't even really give you good examples of bigger ones because you don't, we wouldn't really know bigger companies without them making content, if that makes sense. The only companies that don't make content are the ones you don't know about. You know what I mean? They're irrelevant. And that should be like the overall theme of the answer to this question. So you could definitely make one without the other. Uh, it's going to be increasingly hard to be successful over the next five to 10 years without the combination of the two. Because when you break down what a business is, there's literally just two parts. Obviously, there's a lot of underlying shit to it, but a business is a product or service, and then it is the distribution of the product or service. Content just so happens to be what right now in the world is distribution. And there are other ways to distribute, obviously, you know, there are TV commercials, etc. but those are not realistic for most people. The beauty of social media and content is that you can grow organically without spending any money to do so. Now, I would say content creators have the luxury of building up the hard part of the equation. I think the distribution is without a doubt the hardest part of the equation in today's world because it is hard to get people to listen to you with so many people giving good advice and helpful content and good information and things like that it's hard to stand out so once you have the distribution it makes the selling of the product or service a million times easier from a business perspective definitely think of content as less of the buzzword of social media or content and more of what the actual distribution and marketing of your product or service is i think over the last probably like 10 years when people think of marketing they think of the design of our logo or, you know, let's make cool products. Content is your distribution. If I didn't make content, no one would buy any of the products we make. If I didn't make content ever, how would anyone know about it? No one would buy our draft guide because my content proves to people that I've put the work in, that I understand what I'm talking about. So they now trust me to sell them a product, which has the same work going into it as the content I provide. But I didn't originally make content in the hopes that I would build a business. But with that being said, uh, regardless of the industry, I could not imagine starting a business in 2023 without a heavy emphasis on what the content plan would be first and foremost. All right, we'll wrap up there. Try to keep them short. Uh, I'll try to keep the answers shorter next time so I can get to like five or six of them. But as always, drop some Q and A's in the discord and I will bike trike and uh, retrograde those questions for next week's. Love you. Bye.